Hey all, thank you for checking this reading out. It is a new moon reading for Cancer. First, we are taking a look at the energy um, approaching the new moon. So right around now and, and where you've been for the last couple of days. The Wheel of Fortune. Then at the height of the new moon, the Five of Cups. And then we'll take a look at your energy um, exiting this new moon, the few days following, right? And we have the lovers reversed, Cancers. So this reading is for Cancers, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, or otherwise. Um, I imagine for these new for these new moon readings, a lot of people are checking out their moon signs, but it's really whatever reason that you're you're drawn to the sign. Maybe you're cross watching for someone, or maybe you just want to draw that energy um, into your life. Um, but again, thank you just for checking this reading out, and thank you for liking and subscribing if you haven't, and if you do, welcome lunatics. So let's go ahead and get started. I think I covered everything. Oh, if you would like a private reading, just scroll down to this, the description. Those options are available as well. So we will get clarifiers on these. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. One second. Uh, we will get clarifiers on these, and you do immediately have the lovers on the bottom of this deck as well. And then if we have time, I will pull an advice card for you as well. I meant to do that for Aquarius and ended up just pulling it afterward, right? Um, but it looks like at the height of the new moon, Cancers, there is some maybe mourning, maybe regret for some. In this particular depiction of the Five of Cups, the Deviant Moon Tarot, uh, and there will be information about all of the decks in the description. In this particular depiction, there may be actually a spat coming right at the height of the New Moon Cancers. Uh, it is a New Moon in Sagittarius, and um, you know we are ruled by the Moon Cancers. Tell me about this Wheel of Fortune. Let's see. The Hierophant. So at this time, now and in the last couple of days, as I said, approaching this new moon, it seems that fate has had its hands in, in uh, whatever is, is going on for you. And it seems with the Wheel of Fortune normally like... Um, Good fortune, right? Well, that's that's how I read read the Wheel of Fortune card. Some of you have experienced a heartbreak um, connected to a Taurus, whether that's uh, energy in in your own chart or someone outside of yourself. I see the, the broken heart right at the top of the wheel this time. Now, normally, as I said, the Wheel of Fortune is good fortune, good luck, uh, just fate stepping in. Some Something has happened that, that is actually fortuitous for you. Um, and for many, many of you, I'm sure it seems that way. It feels that way. For others, it feels like a heartbreak but it is actually for your highest good. It, it does actually help you stay on the path that you should be on, Cancers. Um, some of you, um, some of you have started a new commitment, a new ritual. Some of you have changed your faith entirely. And again, it was it was meant to be. It was it was it was on your destined path. Let's see a clarifier regarding the regret at the height of the new moon. The three of wands. Interesting. 
And the Magician card reverse clarifies the lovers reversed for us, Cancers. With the Three of Pentacles on the bottom of the Clarifier deck. And you have the Ten of Swords reversed on the bottom of the Deviant Moon Tarot here. So, let me take a look. And it, it may have to do with an Aries outside of yourself, actually. It may be an Aries energy that you're having a spat with and or some regret over at the height of the new moon. And then we've got, with the lovers reversed, it's, you know, a lengthy entanglement has ended. A commitment has ended. It's interesting that moving into the new moon you it's like you have this new faith this new ritual this new commitment and then moving out of the new moon it looks like um a bond a trust is actually uh broken again maybe with an aries Aries, Gemini, maybe. And I said I was going to get away from these signs. It's just what's really standing out to me for some reason. The Three of Wands, as a clarifier, the Three of Wands speaks of, of confidence to me. You knowing which direction that you want to go in, having already made the decision what you want, um, is, is certainly something that you're feeling at the height of the new moon. Um, feeling established in that way, right? Um, the first step has, has been taken, and yet we have this regret. For some of you, for some Cancers, I think there's just many different messages. Some Cancers are actually, you know, right around this time, you're, you're meeting someone new and it's fueling a breakup with someone else. Yeah, some. Some of you, yes. Definitely, definitely for some of you. Um, this is strange to say, but I'd say like a third of you. Uh, judging from how strongly that 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 confirmation feeling is or, or how strongly that's coming through how strongly the confirmation is coming through or okay a lot of us have made a new commitment to ourselves, our own routine, um, a work that we're doing, um, something that we have faith in, something that's become like, is becoming at this time like a ritual for us. And it, yeah, this is for most cancers. And it has come in, it has come in um, not necessarily because of, but connected to at the same time as, 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 um, for some as a heartbreak. And if that hasn't happened, then I do see this spat, um, and regret at the height of the new moon, which, you know, can be what this reading is about for you is avoiding that space. You, you know, you don't necessarily have to definitely confirmation on that. You don't necessarily have to have this fight. You don't necessarily need to carry this regret. Um, but this new routine, this new ritual, whatever you've newly committed to, and for some of you, I mean whomever, but for most of us, it's whatever you've recently committed to, something having to do with your routine, something that we love to work on, was, again, destined, faded, fate had its hands in this, it was meant to, to come into our lives at this time, we were meant to, to walk this part of the path, to make this commitment to this new way, this new, um, 
ritual routine. This is this, um, this new thing that we, that we really believe in, that we believe in doing. Um, and so, you know, having chosen that and made that commitment, you are, you're feeling, um, I think, I think you, you have this victorious feeling about having made that commitment at this time, Cancers. I saw the six of wands come through for us when I was shuffling and meditating. And again, you're established, you've made the decision. And so that spat that happens at the, the height of the new moon, and that doesn't necessarily have to happen, that we can avoid, that we can be, you know, aware of the energy and how susceptible we are to it, and we can avoid that. Um, very well may have to do with the fact that you've made this commitment, you've decided on this new way, routine, um, belief system for some. But for a lot of us, it's a work. It's a work that we're focused on, that we have faith in, that we believe in, that we've made a, a, a commitment to. And something else that we were committed to, and again, for some it's someone else that we were committed to, as we exit this new moon, uh, that lengthy entanglement, that commitment, that bond, and maybe, maybe trust is is exiting then and it's sort of just it's sort of just like it makes sense because it's sort of just like clearing out things that that don't fit in your life that don't work for you um right as you've invited something else in so you kind of need the space a little bit already and I think that might be the key here is acknowledging that some part of you does feel like you need space in your life now for this new thing you've committed to. And so that might fuel the argument, that might fuel the regret, that might um, fuel this, this feeling of loss. If you don't acknowledge that and you don't speak that, that you know that your life needs um, a little space now, that you need extra room, and then someone invites you into an argument, maybe a lover that things were already on the rocks with, just as an example for some, uh, you may be overwhelmed with how little space you have now and know that this other thing you've committed to is meant to be, is for you, is on your destined path. And it can, it can cause you to lean into that argument and push this person away. And I do see some regret, if not now, later on. So that's not to say that, you know, you shouldn't make space in your life. And that, that um, someone who's not serving your highest good, someone who you don't think is for you, or something that's not for you any longer, it's not to say that that lengthy entanglement should not exit. But it's, it's I think we're talking about the way that it exits. It has very much to do with how confident you are about the path that fate has put you on, that you and fate have put you on now, that your commitment, your new commitment has put you on now. That, that, that confidence, I think, um, makes us want to stand up for what we're doing and what we believe in. And we don't necessarily have to fight with somebody to, to do that, to, to own that confidence, right? It, it, if anything, it would have to do with the little part of us that is doubting that direction. You know, if we're so sure that we're on the path that we're meant to be on, we know where we're going, we're no, no, we're, we know where we're headed, then no one and nothing can, can um, alter that, right? No one can shake us, no one can pull us off of that, only we can do that. So that, that might that might also fuel the fight, that little bit of doubt that we have. And another reason to be sure, if it's not an Aries, if it's not an Aries energy exiting your life or that a lengthy entanglement is is ending with, 
and that could be again energy in your own chart maybe some of you are sh are um uh cancer rising or moon so you're here but you're an airy sun and you've been a little too much in your ego lately and so you're trying to shed that and that's a lengthy entanglement that is that's leaving and you've made a commitment to a way that will um won't benefit from your ego being in charge so often right so for some of you it could be in your own chart but for a lot of us it's someone outside of ourselves or something outside of ourselves and if it's not an Aries energy that a lengthy entanglement is ending with, then Aries and or Gemini, then then I still see, you know, this lengthy entanglement ending, uh, this, this bond being broken with the lover's reverse. And then the magician reversed is speaking about inaction, being unable to, to apply ourselves to conscious manifestation, to, to, to bring... Uh, conscious manifestations to life to, to actually to actually follow through with that even though we know we have all the tools that we need or we may even doubt that we do and that's this energy of this possible spat and regret at the height of the new moon and I know the five of cups is normally lost for a lot of people or at least it is for me but in this particular depiction especially right now in this reading it's just coming off as as the spat that that is pictured that then results in this feeling of regret and loss and mourning even and see if if this person or this thing is meant to leave your life then it will exit and if it doesn't fit with what else you've committed to then it will exit right um, But if you push, if we push, if we use harsh words, um, just have a, a harsh energy toward this other person or thing, and, and we push too hard uh, because we trust the faded path we're on now, because we don't want it to be tested, even though we do feel pretty confident that we are doing what we're meant to do, um, just because it's it, we're, it's instigated, <clears throat> just because it's... Um, it's drawn out of us and we give in to to um, to those energies and we allow ourselves to get upset I think that could be what causes the regret and then we find ourselves in a space where we could be manifesting what we want but we're not because we're regretting because we're mourning and more than anything the way we handled it when someone's meant to leave our lives there's no ultimately regret that they did if you know you're on the path that you're supposed to be on and you know this person isn't part of it or this other thing isn't part of it then then there may be sadness at saying goodbye but there's no real regret if it helps you continue on your destined path or, or just continue toward where you want to be if you want to say it that way if you think of it that way um but if we handle the situation poorly if we're too harsh either with ourselves or the other person, then we just may find ourselves focused on the regret of how we handled it for too long. And it leaves us not manifesting what we're meant to, not using the tools that we have, doubting the tools that we have even. Um, you could, you know, you may just be in a bad energy, just feeling bad about yourself, just wishing, 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 you know, you'd done it differently. And I see this I see this negative cycle repeating with the Ten of Swords reverse. Something is unfinished. So it's almost as if, if we're talking about a person, it's almost as if the two of you aren't actually done though. It's almost as if exiting the new moon period, it seems like they're leaving, but then because the situation wasn't handled in a manner that offered either of you closure it ends up coming back around again whether it's a relationship or 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 you know whether it's a romantic relationship or any other type it just it may be one that that is meant to 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 exit that a cycle is meant to be wrapped up with completed with and And, and, and again, it's the transaction or rather the interaction is handled in such a way that
that this person ends up coming back in. Again, it may be a Taurus. I also have Aquar Aquarius energy here. And you know, I see hope and emotional fulfillment down the line, but probably not with an Aries energy, if that's what you're talking about. Probably not if it's, if it's an Aries, but like I said, I also see Taurus, I also see Gemini. There's an Aquarian card underneath of here. Um, but, but also, I also feel like this is about focusing cancers on work that you love to do work that you love to do so much. You do not notice the time passing while you're doing it. So I think that's really the new routine and ritual and, and, and commitment that's being invited in right about now or, or, uh, has been leading up to this, this new moon. And since I said transaction instead of interaction, some of you are dealing with someone who treats you that way. Your interactions are transactions to them. They want something from you. You see how this, oops, I'll get it later. Uh, you see how this, uh, Look at this character down here. Look at this. And, and in this deck, um, in this picture and illustration, you know, this is looks, seems like a child. But it can just be representing someone childlike. You see this snicker on his face? How he loves that he's getting this reaction out of her? It's really standing out to me here. as is the connection between those three cups that are spilled and these three wands that are your confidence. It's almost like, you know, this person thinks that they have spoiled something for you. And, and some of you may be dealing with someone who is, is liking getting this, this harsh reaction out of you. And it's not putting you in a good space. It's not putting you in a head and a heart space where you can really deliver on this work that you do love to do, where you can really begin to manifest um, what you want next on this, this destined path that you've recently freshly committed to, right? And if they don't want you to leave them or, or, or are just in a negative space themselves, you know, that, that very well may, may be what they're going for. Um, but that can, instead of being a loss in any way, that can be your confidence because you can look at this person and see, like, if you're going to do that to me, if you're willing to, to try to feed off of my reaction, if you're willing, you know, if, if, if it's bringing you joy to bring me down in some way to try to cause a fight with me, well, then I can confidently walk away from you in this and focus on what makes me happier. Right? Um, that's what I see for a lot of you, a, a lot of us Cancers. We can use the fact that this person is willing to go to that negative space to, to push us forward. If you already know that you're supposed to be getting away from them. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic relationship, and it may be something else that you're breaking a bond and commitment with. But who or whatever it is, it's something that can cause a disappointment that gets us so upset that it that it takes us away from what we've newly committed to, right? It takes us away from being able to build more of what it is that we want and what we love to do. Really quickly, I will grab an advice card. These, <laughs> This is way too long for just a few day reading, but took me a minute to get here. The Six of Shells, Sentiment and Joy. Queen of Acorns is on the bottom, Passion and Creativity. That's the Queen of Wands and the Six of Cups or Chalices. The Six of Water and the Queen of, of Fire.
So the six of the six of water is normally about memories, nostalgia, fond memories, um, perhaps uh, a gift from an admirer. Sometimes, I think maybe that's what we're looking at here. Um, innocence, innocence, and a gift from an admirer. So. Um, Likely for most of us, it's not a literal gift. Well, I mean, it is literally a gift, yes, but it's not um, a tangible 3D gift. But it's viewing, as I said at the beginning, it's viewing this heartbreak, this loss, this exiting of something that you were in a lengthy entanglement with or someone, something... something um, Viewing it as a gift, viewing it as a gift from spirit, maintaining your innocence in the situation, seeing this coming in advance as a gift because it, it gives you that ability to maintain your innocence in the situation and this, this faded arrival of something new that you want to commit to, again, probably, again, probably something for yourself, right? Um... That, that is actually a gift, even if, even if for some of you it feels like a heartbreak and it feels like a regret at first. It's pushing you forward. And 33 may be particularly significant at this time. Um, you've got nine cards out, two of them are threes. The three of wands and the three of pentacles. And, and that's, you know, that's that's also what's pushing you forward. You feel confident about the direction that you're headed in because, again, it's work that you love to do. Okay, Cancers, I think we will leave it at that. I hope that it, it uh, offered you something that you didn't have when you came to the reading. Thank you again for checking it out, for likes and subscribes and all your interaction with the channel. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, um, especially... Uh, a special thank you to donators and, and those who purchase readings. It's so appreciated. Um, and uh, I am doing 2019 yearly readings if you're interested. Um, all the all the reading options are down below. You know, you can check all those out or email me at lunaticstarot at gmail.com. I'm happy to work with you. And otherwise, I love you very much, Cancers. And I hope you make very wise choices moving forward. Remember that, that this is all your choice. Taking this path is your choice. Choosing not to participate in this spat. Choosing not to give this person the reaction that they want from you is your choice, right? Choosing to respond instead of react, right? All your choice. And uh, I will post another tarot fix for us very soon.